Hello, I'm Atuba George and I welcome you to the month of September. Praise God. You know, like people say, we've entered the Ember months. And you know, most times people just assume that the Ember months are filled with all kinds of calamities and, and stuff like that. And that's because many times they have just heard or listened to the devil's side. Praise God. Yeah. And, and, and if you put your mind on God's word or on God's side, you will also know that the ember month signifies seasons of restoration, seasons of hope, seasons of God bringing to you the things that have been kept back from you. Praise God. Now, why is the ember month associated with all those kind of... Because they look at it, the year is beginning to wind up. So it's like Satan is coming all out to destroy everything he needs to destroy. What, that, what does that mean also? It means God is coming all out to give you that which is yours. Remember what the Bible said, where sin abounds, grace did what much more abounds. Now, what does that tell you? Wherever you see sin and iniquity, there is so much grace in that place. <laughs> Praise God. So I bless God for this month. I thank God for the things that he's going to do in this month of September. The Lord have spoken and said, this month, seek me or entreat me for mercy. That's what the Lord is saying concerning this month. He says, this month, seek my mercy or entreat my mercy. Praise God. So keep your mind on that. I'm going to be sharing a lot of things with you in this regard. And I'm trusting the Holy Spirit for utterance and, and wisdom to communicate his word in truth and that your heart also will be open, filled with understanding so you will understand and act on his word accurately. Praise God. Now, before we go on, like we do on this broadcast, every day we come on. Praise God. Let's call for that daily bread. Now, this is a new month, so forget about what last month was. Look for increase this month. Yes, look for increase this month. Can we make demand right now? Release your faith with me, not just for your daily bread, but can you just ask for an increase in your daily portion? Can we ask that? Yes, we can. Praise God. Yes, we can. You know why? Because Paul said something that helps us understand the mind of God. He said, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now, what does that mean? If my need was this and my need becomes this, see, God will still supply. The same God will supply all those needs. Now, that's why I'm encouraging you today. Things are, for example, inflation has happened. Inflation is happening. Prices of things are going up. I know what you begin to look at. Oh, my, my, my pay should increase. My, I should cut spending on this and that. Hey, what about turning to the Lord and say, Lord, I need more. I need more supplies. Praise God. That's what I wanted to do today. And believe me, as we go into this month, teaching you the things of the Lord, then you will understand more on what I'm saying. But for now, release your faith for more. And say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. And Lord, I ask for an increase in my daily portion. In Jesus' name, I receive from you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We just bless you for all you're doing in our lives. Thank you for manifesting yourself in truth. We become your manifestation of truth on the earth. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, I said earlier that the Lord has spoken concerning this month. and said this is a month of his mercy. So he's, he's instructing us to ask for his mercy. He's instructing us to entreat him for mercy. Now, this is so important because, yes, does the devil have plans 
of destruction? Yes, he does. Anybody who tells you he doesn't is lying to you. But you see, no matter what the devil has planned, one principle you must understand about the devil is he came late. Yes, he came late. And you see, when we say he came late, it's because um, we, what we mean by he came late. God has finished everything and then everything God finished is good for you. Yes, everything God have planned. He said it, my thoughts, my thoughts concerning you, they are good and not evil. So God didn't plan for your destruction. He did it. God didn't plan for, for, for you to go hungry. He didn't. He rather planned for your welfare. He planned for your good. He planned for your promotion. That's God's plan. See? So if that's God's plan and his plans were finished, according to the Bible, making reference to Bible in Genesis chapter 1, praise God, his plans were finished before he rested. Everything God wants for your life, he finished it long ago. And let me tell you something. When God looked at it and saw that it was good, do you know what he saw? He looked at his plan. Is there any way Satan can disrupt this plan? That's what God was looking at. Is there anything that can happen? Now, not, not Satan now, you know, as, as at that time when he created, but rather, is there anything that can go wrong in this plan that cannot be repaired? Is there any? And he looked at it, looked at us that he made, looked at everything. And he's like, no, there is nothing. And absolutely nothing. And then he says, then my plan is good. Yeah, that's what he has. He doesn't look at mm, ah, it's good. No, he took time to analyze every nitty gritty, every angle of it. What can ever go wrong with this plan? He did his analysis. He took it. He, he did his risk analysis. He did everything. What, what, what can just go wrong? And he made sure everything was right. So when he declared it good, it means it was good indeed. Praise God. When did he do this? Before the world began. So anything Satan is bringing now to throw at you, it's too late. Brothers and sisters, believe me, it's too late. Eh, well, pastors, well, well, why, why then do we suffer? You might be suffering because of your ignorance. Eh, this is what this is what I don't like. This what you know. Sometimes people just think, Pastor, you people always have something to say. You know, but but then see if we don't tell you the truth. If we don't tell you the truth, then you're lost. Somebody's got to tell you the truth. And let me tell you something about the truth. The truth brings responsibility to you. Whenever you hear truth, it puts responsibility in you. You don't just hear truth and say, mm, 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 yeah, okay, okay. No, it puts responsibility. So when you hear people say, this person does not like the truth. You know what they are really saying? This person doesn't want to take responsibility. Yes. You don't want to hear that, okay, you, you did wrong or you have been doing wrong. You don't want to hear that. You don't want to hear that, okay, you need to go some mile before you get the kind of result. No, no, you just want to relax, be lazy, and then everything works out, comes to you, and then that's how people just want to live their lives. Let me show you a scripture, Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Oh, yeah. And verse 64. Psalm 119. And verse 64. It says, The earth, O Lord, is full of thy mercy. Teach me thy statutes. The earth... I want you to look at this. Now, this, this was David speaking, eulogizing the Lord. And then he said, The earth, O Lord, is full of thy mercy. Now, what does that mean? 
David is bearing witness that, look, there is no part. Now, when he says the earth is full of your mess, there is no part of this earth that doesn't carry the mercy of God. There is none. Now, why would God wire or fill the whole earth with his mess? I told you. God looked at everything and said, look, it's good. So there is no one, I call me Napra Itaskiba. No one, no one can ever say mercy was not available for him. No one. Now, when he said the earth is full of God's mercy, actually he's also saying the earth is full of God's goodness. Now, because mercy manifests his goodness. Mercy is in his heart, okay? But the demonstration of mercy will bring forth good. You remember I was telling you last week, yeah? One of the last uh, messages I, I shared last month. I was telling you something. I said, the, 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 there is no one who can ever say God was bad or God was wicked to him. I was telling you earlier, people just don't like taking responsibility. Because I shared the story of Esau and Jacob. And, and there is this assumption that we have that Esau was created to be bad. No. And, 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 and then we quote what Paul said. He said, but, but the Bible said, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. And the question you must ask yourself is, when did God make that statement? <laughs> Funny enough, God made that statement years, many years after both of them had gone. God didn't make that statement when they were born or before they were born. God didn't even make that statement when they were alive. God made that statement years before they were born. <laughs> And then he made that statement. It was Malachi that, that, that spoke those words that Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. That's what it was Malachi in his prophecies that made that statement. So why would God be saying that in Malachi? Now, oh, but you know, you want to think and say, but 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 he said before they were born, you know, when the prophecy came to Rebecca, two nations are in your womb, and the elder one will serve the younger one. And I've told you before, I was telling you that time, I said, there is nothing wrong with that statement. Nothing wrong with it. But why would God say the, the elder one will serve the younger one? That's putting the younger one above the elder one. No! We are the ones that did not understand what God said. Now, Jesus came and he was teaching his disciples and then he made a statement. He says, let the one who's greatest among you serve. Did you see that? The one who's greatest among you should what? Serve. So now, let's use that to mirror what God said. God said, the elder one will serve the younger one. Jesus said, let the greatest among you serve. So what was God saying? God was literally saying Esau was greater than Jacob. And that's why he was telling him, look, serve your brother. Serve, because see, you have the slave mentality. When you hear serve, you know what, what comes to your mind? You're, you're thinking of a slave. But serve also means protect. The president of your nation is serving you. Huh. So I'm greater than him. You know, people bring up all this argument, argument. The office of the citizen of the nation is greater than the office of the president. You know all those arguments. But, but get, get what we're talking about. See, most times, that's how people react to prophecies. Because they do not understand prophecies. They, and it's simple English problem or language problem. You don't understand the language of the speaker, Okay. And because you don't understand the language of the speaker, you assume. There is this popular story in Nigeria, okay, uh, about how um, 
I think um, someone had, in the marketplace, and then someone had gone to shop. And the person who went to shop, his name was Latif. Okay? And he forgot something in the, the, the shop where he went to shop and left. Now, after a few minutes, the owner of the shop, who's a northerner, and then, you know, tongue, um, the pronunciations are different. The owner of the shop saw what Latif left and came out of the shop holding the thing and started shouting, Natif, Natif, Natif. Now, because he pronounces L as N. Now, you find this in the Bible also. You remember one time during, um, oh, there was a war with the Ephraimites and, and one other nation. And so they were trying to find, okay, who's an Ephraimite? So they, they had to like, are you an Ephraimite? He said, yes. Then they would say, okay, say Shibboleth. Now, the Bible says because I think the Ephraimites also cannot pronounce the word, the sound, she. Right? They will say Sibboleth. They say Shibboleth, say Sibboleth. Ah, you're telling a lie. And they kill you. Now, the same thing, um, now this is a story, okay? And uh, this owner started shouting, Natif, Natif, Natif. And then when the person turned, to look at, he was pointing like, help me, help me, native, native. Now what the people were hearing, he's a thief, he's a thief. So they rounded this guy, beat him up and <laughs> dealt with him before this shop owner would get to that place. He had received blows and they were almost setting him up on fire, you know, in such a barbaric manner. And then he was shouting, no, 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 no. Finally, he got there and like said, ah, went to in thief, you know, in, in, in pidgin English, you know. And he says, no, 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 not thief, not thief. Like, hey, hey, so, hey, no, no, no. Then he now explained to them, not thief forgets in, like, ah, how will you say he stole something and forget? Right then he now explained, and someone was able to catch the meaning. And by, But then this guy was almost dead. Praise <laughs> God. Now you see, what am I telling you? Language sometimes can become a challenge, even in scriptural interpretation. That's why I always tell you this. I say, look, it takes great measure of patience to understand the word of God. Great amount of patience. So God can say something. And then because of your background, your training, what you have been exposed to, you understand something different from what God said. And then you run with your own thoughts. God said, the elder one will serve the younger one. He never said, the elder, the younger one will be greater than the elder one. Yes, he was telling them also that put your eyes on the younger one. Now, that's why he said the elder one will serve him. Because the elder one is the one to be protected. Why? Now, I can, I can explain deeply on that too. Why did God, why did God even say that in the first place? Why did God, and then, now they misunderstood God. And they began to treat Jacob more, you know, if you study the Bible, you'll see that there was that division. Mother loves Jacob, father loves Esau. But then here's my point, before I round off, because our time is almost up. Here is my point. In the midst of that, just to let you know that God had great plans for Esau. There was nothing that Esau, Jacob got, that Esau couldn't have gotten. God had prepared wives for both of them in the house of labor. And by the Spirit of God, Jacob was advised to go to the house of Laban to marry there. Now, Esau, even though had taken wives, two wives already, he heard when Jacob was told where to go to marry. Now, Esau went to marry without his parents' input. He just did his thing. But then even when Jacob was told, commanded, Esau heard. And instead of Esau to go in that same direction, he went 
in the other direction. Went to take another wife. So even after he had two wives, he still had an opportunity to redeem himself, but he didn't. Was God's mercy available for Esau? Yes, it was full. The earth was full of mercy for him. But he didn't take it. That's my admonishment for you today. Listen, the mercy of God is, is everywhere. My job as a priest of the Most High God is to teach you how to obtain that mercy for your own good. And that's what we're going to be doing this month. Listen to me. You don't have to remain in that situation where you find yourself. Things can change for the better. I pray for you today in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, I release everyone listening to me to the blessing of the month of September. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, let your hand of mercy rest upon everyone that is listening to me right now. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, every negative part that they are treading on right now, by your mercy, let wisdom come to them to turn around. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, yes, let there be a turn around because of your mercy. Lord, extend your mercy to everyone under the sound of my voice right now. Let mercy speak. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. May God bless you this month. Grow, increase, and be helped. In Jesus' name. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.